I'm praying that everyone has come once again in the presence of our Lord Jesus Christ prepared for this day. I'm praying that everyone that is now gathered in the presence of the Holy Spirit, you have already been prepared by the Holy Spirit while you stay in the secret place for this great day. In mysteries and revelations, every service, every encounter brings another supernatural, unique dimension in the spirit. Now, I don't want to waste much of your time because the gospel can never waste any of your time. I want to quickly get into today's word, but before I do, I just want to remind you so that you know that we are coming once again. Or oh, should I say we are in the middle of a series presentation and this series presentation has reached its climax in the spirit. It has reached its destination. We are in the series The Realm of the Dead and four episodes have been presented and there is also another episode that was presented but it's not part of the four episodes it was a vision and i'm praying that those that are partakers of this ministerial work you had a chance to listen to that vision it is not part of these four segments but it was a vision in which the Holy Spirit instructed me to share of my experience as the revelator being taken to the realm of the dead and the warfare that transpired there. I'm not going to be explaining that. Why? Because this is something that I expect everyone to have listened online. In the past four episodes, I explained quite a number of different dimensions pertaining the realm of the dead and even the realm of death, I explained about Lazarus being descended to a bottomless pit. But in this bottomless pit, Lazarus did not ascend to Hades. This bottomless pit was not in the spirit, but it was in the physical. How? Why Lazarus lived in hell, why he lived here on earth, the kind of life that he lived, it was the bottomless pit here on earth. And then Lazarus is ascended by the angels as soon as his spirit departed and is taken up to the bosom of Abraham, which was paradise. And I explained about the encounter between Lazarus and the rich man, the rich man was buried and explained that the burial of the rich man might have been one of the most decent or expensive burials, but the destination of the rich man was not very rosy. I explained also about the resurrection of Lazarus after three days, after four days rather, and Christ comes and instructs them to push the rock aside so that Lazarus could come out. And I remember explaining that the pushing of that rock signaled the opening of a portal. I explained about the four horsemen, the system of the four horsemen that were dispatched 
these four horsemen that I displayed, I explained about the system of the red horse that was dispatched to kill. I explained about the black horse that was dispatched to cause greed and poverty. I explained about all these horses, including the last two horses, the last horse rather, which was called Jelly, that was riding on a pale horse in the Hades that followed afterwards. I explained lastly, earlier in the first morning service, about the young girl that had departed. And the young girl, before she departed, she had been separated from her body. And Jesus says, the little girl is only asleep. And they loved to mock Jesus. And Jesus quoted words in form of mystic tongues and brought back the little girl back to life. Now, welcome to the fifth and the last final segment of the realm of the dead. The fifth and the last final segment of the realm of the dead. And in this realm, I'm praying once again and I'm hoping that the Spirit of the Lord, I'm praying that also the Holy Spirit is going to allow His presence to usher us into the desire, desirable revelation. The fifth and final segment, the realm of the dead. The realm of the dead, part five. Let's get into scriptures. Let's go to the book of Jonah, chapter 1, verse 15. The book of Jonah, chapter 1, verse 15. But I'm not going to be reading through that whole passage, but I'll briefly narrate some events that happened before certain events that I'm going to be relevantly using as the reference of today's relevant presentation. Jonah has been sent to Nineveh by God. And after Jonah has been sent to Nineveh, somehow, because of disobedience, Jonah decides to flee to Tashish. And before Jonah even decides to flee to Tashish, he actually boards the wrong ship that would take him to Tashish. And there is a lot that transpired on the way. But before we can even mention a lot that transpired on the way, the mystery still surrounds the disobedience of why Jonah chose to disobey the Lord and avoid going to Nineveh and flee to Tashish. There could be many reasons that affect preachers. Why? Because they've got a favorable con congregation. And if it was that matter, on that particular note, not considering the disobedience of Jonah, I do understand it as a preacher that they are favorable places that preachers would want to preach. I'm not even talking about favorable places because the people there, they support the men of God financially, no. I'm talking about the favorable places where you know that when you are preaching, your voice is heard. So that could have been the reason that made Jonah flee to Tashish. And he said, I'm not going to Nineveh. Those are dated people that don't listen to sermons. I'm not going to Nineveh. Those are dated people that will be thinking about other things while I'm preaching. Jonah says, I would rather go to Tashish. God, I've been listening to you, but I'm not going to Nineveh. And he boards a ship and goes to Tashish. But the Lord cannot be disobeyed. And the Lord sends a mighty wind. The Lord sends a tempest. I'm briefly narrating as I am taking you to the reference that is relevant to the presentation. Relevance. Jonah decides to take a nap or to take a sleep in the basement of the boat. And while this Jonah is taking a nap, a sleep in the basement of the boat. There is a chaos 
there is a mayhem that is happening. And this mayhem that is happening, it is not just a natural thing. Jonah, you are hiding inside the sheep, but the tempest is coming after you. Jonah, you are hiding in the sheep, but there is a whirlwind that is following you. Jonah, you are sleeping in the sheep as if everything is normal, but death is following you. What is following Jonah is not just the mighty tempest, but what is following Jonah now, after having disobeyed the Lord, it is death itself. For the wages of sin are death, according to Paul. But I need you to understand, before death consumes, death comes to steal. And Jonah, you don't realize that your life is about to be stolen. You are sleeping in the boat and the Lord will continue pursuing you. And the Lord continued to pursue Jonah to the level that the people that were inside the ship, the mariners, according to the reference of the passage, they started throwing out their luggage out of the ship. There were different business personalities that represented different religions and different gods. They started throwing their luggage out of the ship. Why? Because they did not have an understanding of why the boat, why the ship was under attack. And as they threw luggage, they reached a level of understanding and reasoning. Why is this evil still following us? We thought this was a matter of gravity. We thought that the boat is now overloaded. But the wind became even angrier as they tried to control the ship until one amongst them was given the reasoning of revelation by God. And he said there is one more person that is not amongst us here. That person is sleeping downstairs. And they asked each other, is that man a business person? What is he? He's not a business person. What does he do? We have never bought a ship with that man. We have done many trips. There is a man that is sleeping down there. And he's sleeping comfortably and peacefully as if, as if he's not realizing the chaos that is happening. And one of them said, I'm going to go and call him. Why is he practicing such nu nuisance? Does he not realize that we are in trouble? Does he not realize that our lives are at stake? And one man went down to the basement. And when he reached the basement, he shook Jonah who was fast asleep. I don't know what he was dreaming about. Probably he was dreaming already preaching in Tashish when he had not arrived. And he shook Jonah for the third time. And Jonah awoke and said, why are you bothering me? I was having a good dream. And the man says, what do you mean sleeper? That is what the, the reference of that scripture says if you read it. The man says, what do you mean sleeper? Why? Because the man wants to understand that in times of chaos and crisis, you are forced asleep. In times when not just danger has befallen us, but death is about to consume us, you are fast asleep. I've seen so many times when I'm preaching, you can actually see someone that is sleeping in a service. It shocks me the most. It shocks me the most to learn that you can have someone that will be actually sleeping in the middle of a service. That joy is awakening. And the man says, I have nothing to discuss with you in this basement of the boat. Let's go upstairs. Why? Because these boats, they were in different partitions. And Jonah was led. And Jonah, as he is walking up the stairs to the upper basement of the boat, and is raising his garment, he's realizing that water is now entering inside the boat. I'm just giving you some brief narrations from the Revelator's deep psychological creativity. Things not written in scripture. Why? Because I'm not rigid minded. Amen. If I stick to scripture, I will limit myself. I reveal beyond scriptures. And Jonah is led to the upper basement. And when Jonah is led to the upper basement, Jonah gets to the upper basement and Jonah says, man, why have you awakened me? And the mariners are telling Jonah, there is a crisis that is happening here. But we don't know why this crisis has befallen us. And Jonah started scratching his head as if he did not know. He did not understand what was happening. And then after a while, after having realized 
that this crisis was not getting any better. Then Jonah said, the only way you people can get spent is to throw me into the sea. But before Jonah gives them a signal that they throw him into the sea, the men, the mariners, they tried very hard again to control the ship that it would not sink. But inasmuch as they tried, it failed. They even tried to cast lots. If it was a coin, they tossed a coin. In fact, it, it was a debated dispute. They did everything, but all that they did, all the cast, all the lots that they casted, they fell upon Jonah. And Jonah said, you people, you are wasting time. I fled away from the presence of God. I fled away from the presence of God. Even if you try to call unto your gods, it will not work. They tried to build the altars of the gods of the sea. They tried to build the altars of the gods of creatures. It failed. Jonah is saying unto them, I worship the Lord that is in charge of the dry lands and the seas. And these men were exceedingly afraid. And these men were left with no choice but to get to the narration which I want us to read in Jonah chapter 1 verse 15. Jonah chapter 1 verse 15. So they took up Jonah and cast him forth into the sea, and the sea ceased from her region. Jonah is cast into the ugly sea. This is happening to a prophet of God. The reason why God is pursuing Jonah, the reason why God was pursuing Jonah is because this is God's prophet. Why have you forsaken my instructions, Jonah? And Jonah knows that the only way I can save these men is to be sacrificed. And after being sacrificed, then these men can be spared. After Jonah was thrown into the sea, the scripture says, the sea calmed down. Now, after Jonah was thrown into the sea, the scriptures say there was a whale or a shark or a fish, you can name it, whatever you want. That was waiting, it was already open in his mouth. You know that God is in charge of all creatures. You know at one time that Jesus entered into Peter's boat when he was failing to catch fish. And he just gave a signal to the fish and they came and gathered around the boat so that they can be caught. God had already prepared a whale and that whale was opening its mouth very wide. And Jonah as he is drawn into the sea. He is swallowed by the whale. There is a scripture, before I get to that scripture, which Jesus references about Jonah. Jonah was in the belly. This is the part that I now need people to listen. Why? Because I'm also going to be using scripture reference. This is the part which if you don't listen, you are not going to understand anything. Jonah was in the belly of the fish for three days. His body indeed. But Jonah was not in the belly of the fish for three days. Why are you contradicting yourself, Reverend? I'm not contradicting myself. There is a Jonah who has a physical body that was swallowed by the fish for three days. I'm not talking about the, the Jonah, the cartoon that your kids write at school with the Jonah that will be seated inside the, the fish. That is nonsense. I'm talking about the Jonah that was not swallowed by the fish, but the, the Jonah that fainted while he's still inside the fish and he died. Well, give us the evidence, Revelator. Oh, yes, I'm going to give you the evidence. Now, in Jonah chapter 1, verse 17, now the Lord had prepared a great fish to swallow up Jonah. And Jonah was in the belly of the fish three days and three nights. Then Jonah prayed unto the Lord, his God, out of the fish belly. I hope someone is understanding that. Out of the fish belly. Why would Jonah pray while he's out of the fish belly? We need to know where Jonah was. And we need to get this evidence in scripture. We are going to get the evidence to those that are scripturally 
rigid minded. They don't hear any voice, they don't see anything in the spirit, they only hear a scripture and that's it. But this ministry does not function like that. We need to investigate where was Jonah. If you read the letter, you are saying Jonah's body was in the belly of the fish for three days. Where was the spiritual body of Jonah? Where was it? Right? Then listen to Jonah's prayer. And Jonah says, I cried by reason of my affliction unto the Lord. And he heard me, and out of the belly of hell cried I. Why is Jonah now talking about the belly of hell? Is it a parabolic uh, language? Is it a parabolic statement? Let's find out. Why is Jonah now telling us about the belly of hell? When he was inside the belly of the fish. And the scripture is telling us that Jonah is doing this prayer while he is still out of the bed, out of the bed of the fish. Now, let's continue. And Jonah says, For you had cast me into the deep, in the midst of the seas. In the midst of the seas. Why is Jonah talking about the midst of the seas? Why is he, he is in the bed of the fish? And the floods had come past me. And thy waves and thy pillows passed over me. And I prayed. And I said, I will look again towards the Holy Temple. This is a prayer that is being done beyond inside the belly. The body is still inside the belly of the fish, but the spiritual body is no longer inside the belly. Give us more evidence, Revelator. Oh, yes, I'm going to give you evidence. It is not my evidence, it is evidence in the scriptures. The waters come past me, and the weeds were wrapped in about my head. Why is Jonah now telling us about the weeds? Wrapping him around the head. Jonah is now trapped in a certain realm. There's a realm where Jonah is trapped. We want to get to that realm. And Jonah says, but you brought up my life from, from corruption. This prayer that Jonah is doing, it is like a testimonial prayer after he had been spread out. So we are being given the delayed information of what had already transpired. Like a story being told, yet it was a prayer that he did. I hope someone is intelligent enough to hear me. If you are one that you could not understand the syllabus once at school, you are going to understand today. Because much is more complicated what is being taught than the rigid syllabus that you are taught at school. Then Jonah says, when my soul fainted within me, I remembered the Lord. What does Jonah mean by saying, when my soul fainted? Do you know what it, it, it means to say, when my soul fainted within me? It means my soul left the body. When my soul fainted within me, it means Jonah died. And Jonah, after he had died, I went down to the bottoms of the mountains. Even if you are one that wants to dispute with the revelator, this one you cannot dispute about it. Why is Jonah now telling us that I went to the bottoms of the mountains? This revelation, the revelator only has it. Most of the preachers, they have told you that Jonah was inside the belly. Why is this? Why is the preacher, why is Jonah now telling us that I went to the bottoms of the mountains to do what when you're inside the belly of the fish? Where is Jonah? I went to the bottoms of the mountains. The earth with their bars was about me. The earth is not talking about the earth. The earth with their bars was about me. Where was Jonah? It is now quite evident that Jonah is no longer in the belly of the fish. But Jonah is now in the belly of Sion. He's now in the belly of Hades. But before he got to Hades, he went under the mountains. I've already given you the reference, the evidence. He went under the mountains. He went. Where did Jonah go? Let's hear according to Jesus reference according to Jesus opinion according to Jesus insight about Jonah when Jesus came in the New Testament he begins to tell us things about Jonah and what did Jesus tell us he says in Matthew chapter 12 verse 40 for as Jonah was 
three days and three nights in the whale's belly. So shall the man, so shall the son of man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. In the heart of the earth is where Jonah was. Jonah was not in the belly of the fish for three days. But in another version, if you read it, it says, for John, as Jonah was in the bank of Seo, Jonah was taken underneath under the mountains. His spirit is departed out of the body. The body has remained inside the belly of the fish. So if you meet anyone who says, why was he lying to us that Jonah was not, not inside the belly of the fish? Ask him, did I ever say Jonah was not in the belly of the fish? It's, not, it's because you will not be listening. Did I ever dispute that Jonah was in the belly of the fish? If they had cheered the belly of the fish, they were going to find a Jonah that was unconscious. They were going to find a Jonah that was dead. I'm talking about the, the Jonah that had left the boat. Jonah was now in the bottomless places under the mountains. I want to talk about the realm of the dead. All that I was giving you is just the introduction. I want to talk about the realm of the dead. A place where Jonah explains that I did a prayer Wednesday day. A place that exists in the spirit dimension. A place that exists under this world. Jesus defined it as the heart of the earth. The heart of the earth is the bottomless place under the mountains. It's not a place that you can travel physically. Even if you keep on digging, even if you keep on digging, you will never dig until you reach that place. That place was under, and that place is under the mountains. It is in the bottomless places. And Jonah prays, why is he? He is in that place. Now, I need you to understand before I can talk about Jonah being released, Jonah was put in the heart of the earth, in the realm of the dead. And while he still was in the realm of the dead, the question is how did Jonah manage to do the prayer that he then confessed after being spat out by the fish? In the book of Revelations, I explained about the dead that shall stand before God. I talked about it. The sea that will give up the dead. The sea that shall give up the dead is the sea that will release those that have been swallowed by the realm of death, those that have been swallowed by the underworld, and they are delivered in the realm of the dead. The realm of the dead has got three partitions. There's the realm of the dead. There is the realm of Hades. And there is hell. Those that have just died today, they descend in the realm of the dead. And they are greeted and they are welcomed by their fellow relatives that they had foolishly written resting peaceful. And they realized that my uncle was actually not resting in peace. But he has been torn into pieces by the misery in the realm of the dead. Now, when you arrive, this place that I'm saying when you arrive there, I'm talking about those that arrived today because you are not born again. It's not a place that you arrive if you are born again. In the book of Revelation 6, it talks about the apostles that were under the altar of God, that were pleading unto the Lord, how long shall we have to wait so that you avenge our blood? And they were given white robes, and they were told that they must wait a little longer until their fellow servants, like the revelator and the rest that are preaching, should be killed and be delivered into the same realm. That is if they don't compromise the gospel. That was an upper realm where the, the apostles that have been killed were asking the Lord. And there is a realm where the rich man was taken. The realm where he was communicating with the Abraham, the father of faith, the father of nations. And the father Abraham says, there's nothing I can do. Yes, I'm the father of nations, but when it comes to this matter, if you are on the other side, there's no way that you can get delivered. He was still in temporal torments in the realm of the dead. There is a realm underneath the day where all those that have died, they are loitering. Where all those that have died are not resting. 
This is why some of your relatives that have died, when you think about them the most, the very same night you dream about them, and you wake up foolishly saying it is because I was thinking too much. Why? Because you ignore spiritual things. Your grandmothers, your grandfathers, your late mom, doesn't matter how much you loved your mother or your father if she was not, if he or she was not born again. Even if you buy the best coffin, even if you build the best tombstone, it will not work. They are going to hell. They are in hell. But before they get to hell, they arrive in a place that is called the realm of the dead. This is why all the people that died, they left a dream that before they died, they had a dream of another person that had died that came to collect them. We hated that so many times. That person actually came, sent by Lucifer. Why? Because that person has been defeated in the realm of death. The wizards and the witchcraft, the, 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 the traditional healers, which you have visited, but you never confessed before you came to Christ. They, were, they had the capacity to bring the dead. We have a man in the scriptures who was called King Saul. King Saul was rejected by Prophet Samuel. I'm just going to give you a narration about this. Because if, you, if I take you into scriptures, we are never going to finish teaching. Saul was rejected by Prophet Samuel. And Prophet Samuel reached a point of death. But before Prophet Samuel died, he anointed David. So Saul remained on the throne. And when Saul remained on the throne, he no longer had any counsel, which is in form of the voice of God. And Saul resorted to finding voices that don't represent God. But he went and summoned the spirit of a witch. And the witch summoned Prophet Samuel. Where was Prophet Samuel? Prophet Samuel was summoned from underneath. Let's get into that scripture. Why? Because they will start saying he's preaching things from his head. He's started. <laughs> right? And Saul disguised himself and put on other raiment and went and he met two men and they came to a woman by night. And he said, I pray divine unto me by a familiar spirit and bring me the one that I shall mention. This woman is a witch. She has power to bring the dead. Not back to life. But she has power to go into the realm of the dead at the reception office. There is a two-one demon there. And he says to the two-one demon, I have a dead person that I want in this realm. And they look in their computer. Who is the dead person? The dead person is Prophet Samuel. He indeed worked for God. But Christ has not yet come to deliver him from the dead. So he is also in the realm of the dead. And the demon with the two horn wearing spectacles looks into the system of the computer and says, I found a name. There is who? There is Prophet Samuel. Let us bring him. And they go and call Prophet Samuel. Where is the soul? He's on the surface of the earth waiting for Prophet Samuel. And in just a moment, the woman says, I see God's descending, ascending. The woman says, I see God's ascending out of the earth. Listen to me. The God that this woman saw, it is in that passage. You read it when you get home. In 1 Samuel chapter 28, verse 6, you write it down. Because if I touch every scripture, we are never going to leave this place. I know that I start to dwell in some serious revelations. And those that don't love the weight, they will feel very sad. And the woman is saying, I see gods ascending out of the earth. And he said that way, what form is he of? And she said, an old man coming, coming up. This was the spirit of Prophet Samuel ascending from the realm of the dead. And it came out. And Saul began to inquire, the same way that he used to inquire from Prophet Samuel. And he asked about a bakery. He asked about the future of his kingship. And Saul was actually told that tomorrow, you and your son, you are going to die in the bakery field. Listen to me, child of God. The reason why Saul is already defeated is because he is inquiring 
not from God, but inquiring from the dead. Did the prophet Samuel not work for God? Was prophet Samuel not a prophet of God? He was a prophet of God. It doesn't matter that your man of God or anyone that was so kind-hearted, whatever person, anyone that I find standing at the tombs and just speaking things to your late mother that is, that is already died, anyone that I find at the tombs and just speaking to your late grandfather, you are worshiping the dead. And what surprises me is that you actually have the belief that we are hearing. But when I'm presenting the realm of the dead, you, you look at me as if you are surprised. What is he talking about? But you're the very first, same person that is built in tombstone for someone that is there. Why are you built in tombstone? Why are you built in tombstone? You start telling me that you respect the dead. How do you respect the dead if they are dead? You see how confused people are? They are even built in tombstone. They are even the rest in peace. Who are you writing rest in peace for? When is that person going to read that? Don't ask me about the realm of the dead that I'm presenting before you answer me these questions that I'm asking you. You even bought the most expensive coffee. Are you doing it for the community? Are you doing it for the dead? There is a realm of the dead and there are portals of tombs. I explained it in the vision of the revelator in the realm of the dead, which is not part of these five segments. Every tomb, every tomb that is dark, every pit that is dark, it is a portal that leads. It is, a, it is an entrance to the realm of the dead. And when you reach that realm, there are people that are loitering down there. They are in different categories of enslavement. They loiter underneath. Some of them, they remember that they, they, they used to be alive. Some of them, they remember. Listen to me. Why do you believe that they are ghosts, but you don't believe that there is the realm of the dead? Even if you don't believe that the dead exist somewhere, but the book of Revelation says, and the dead shall stand before God. How do the dead stand before God? In the realm of the dead underneath, there are cells, there are prison cells, where people that died before they gave their life to Jesus, they are trapped underneath. In the realm of the dead, there are skulls. In the realm of the dead, there are creatures, creatures that are eating the flesh of those that you believe that they died. And you are saying, how do these creatures eat the flesh when the one that was built was built here on earth? Which ends do you think eat the flesh? You think it is the ends that stay, stay inside the ground? Go and dig up the ground and find those ends. Go and dig the ground. And you come with the ends, put them in a plate and show me. Since you want to dispute. The earth consumes through the pit of another realm, which is called the realm of the dead. Where the dead are living in misery, in an airtight, locked condition, and they cannot escape. And they loiter. When Jesus died, he reached also that place. He went and he preached to those that were loitering. When Jesus died and left his, this body, the scripture says some bodies of the prophets of old, they were seen later in the city, and some tombs cracked open. What was happening? Those were portals of tombs that were opening. It is there in the book of Matthew, at the, book of the, at the end of the book of Matthew. And there are tombs that cracked, and they split, and certain souls were seen loitering and walking around. Your problem is thinking that the dead are unconscious. The dead are only unconscious to this realm. They have departed from the earth. They have not departed from certain realities. In so many cases, I have had visions. It was not the first time. When I explained about the vision of the revelator descending to the realm of the dead. In so many cases, I've seen myself ministering to those that deceased, 
so many times. Why do you have to appear in the realm of the dead when the gospel is the gospel of life? We are a ministry of realms and dimensions. And being a ministry of realms and dimensions, we are a ministry that preaches the gospel in all dimensions. We don't have a dimension that we are limited. We don't have a dimension or a realm that we cannot enter. There are so many realms that we are going to enter beyond just the realm of the dead. At the, book of, at, the, at the end of the book of Revelations, it talks about an angel that will come down, a mighty angel, and it will bind Lucifer. And after binding Lucifer, the devil, it will draw him and cast him into a prison in the pit. And Lucifer shall be chained for a thousand years. And after a thousand years, Lucifer shall be set free. My question is, why then was Lucifer chained for a thousand years? You will not understand the things of the Spirit. They are things that God does because he has got authority. They are things that the revelator will do just to demonstrate authority. There are things that mysteries and revelations has been sent to do to practice authority. Jonah is spit out of the fish, his body. But before Jonah is spit out of the fish, his body, Jonah is restored back in his, in his body. It means God ascends Jonah out of the realm of the dead, out of the pit of Hades, because Hades and the realm of the dead, they are like neighboring countries. <coughs> they don't even share a border. It is just a passage. <coughs> if we say there are two nations that share a border, it means that there is a demarcation. There is no border. The realm of the dead the people that are in the realm of the dead and the people that are in the 80s, in the 80s they have access to see each other. But the people that are in the realm of the dead have just descended. Why is they are being booked up apartments in the 80s? They just arrived in the realm of the dead. And in the 80s, you are led to hell. In hell, you are put in the prison cells. But why is you are in the realm of the dead? You are being tormented in misery, in afflictions, in pain, in mourning. This is why you realize that the relatives that have parted <coughs> from this world, your friends, your loved ones that have left this earth, when you see them in your dreams, most of the time they will be said, <coughs> do not be happy. They are, trying, they are either trying to get back to you or they are trying to convince you to come where they are. Usually, when they are trying to convince you to come where they are, it means the spirit of death is following you. Usually, when they are trying to get where you are, it means they are in torment. And whenever I come across anyone that sees such a vision, I just wish you go and remove that post you put it in the graveyard, which is written rest in peace. Because it, it is a lie. They are not resting in peace. Anyone that did not receive Jesus is not resting in peace. Let's stand up. Anyone that did not receive Jesus is not resting in peace. Anyone that has not given his life to Jesus is not resting in peace. It is time that if you had not given your life to Jesus, if you had not offered your life to Jesus, it is time that you give your life to Jesus. I want to do this prayer for those that are online. If you had not given your life to Jesus, this is the opportunity. 
this is the time. We don't have time here on earth. Our time is little. Jesus is waiting for you to make the best decision of your life. All those that are online that are watching me right now, if you had not given your life to Jesus, you still have a chance to escape the realm of death, the realm of the dead. You have a chance to escape Hades. You have a chance never to reach the heart of the earth. You are being given a chance to ascend and to be ascended by the angels. Like Lazarus' spiritual boat was ascended by angels. As Jesus was ascended in resurrection, you don't have to resurrect. You will never die if you receive Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Let's pray.